I'd like to extend a very, very warm and loving handshake and embrace on behalf of the Sacred Earth Council to Humanity Rising Leadership Summit. Hello, my name is Emelina Legrand. Hi, I'm Thomas Legrand. We live together with our family in the southwest of France, close to the monastery of Saint Master Chuton at Han, Plum Village. Last year, in the month of November, I had one of a very big impression. I found Eshne Fleury in one of the hamlets of Plum Village. And when I saw her, it was as if I was seeing a ghost appear in, in front of me. My husband, I asked him to talk to her so that I can explain her what, what was happening. And then we sat down and I talked to, we talked to Eshna and I said, I've seen you in a dream. And she asked me about the dream. And I explained to her that this dream happened when I was around 10. There was a lady living in my house. And she said that I was going to have a dream, that I was going to be presented to a consul. And then a couple of days later, I had a dream. And in this dream, I had this, I, I saw this four people that were sitting there. One of them was Eshna, and I could very clearly recognize her because of her hummingbird tattoo in her face. And she looked just like as she, as she looks today. And there were other three people sitting there. One was an African, and um, he looked like a Dogon. It was more like a, the vision of a, of a Dogon person. And the other one was an Indonesian man, Indonesian or maybe Filipino man. I cannot say it's nationality, but at least for the way it looked, it was from Southeast Asia. And there was a, a woman that looked from the Mongolian shamanic tradition. And she had a big drum in her hands and that's where I saw Eshna for the first time it was a dream so when I explained her this dream to Eshna um, the first time we met she was very impressed because she explained us that she was in Plum Village to talk about the Sacred Earth Council and uh, the visions she had had so then we decided to, to spend together uh, a couple of days she went to a house and we received a powerful message uh, from a light being who introduced itself as the light of knowledge and who told us that well something that was very important at this stage was to bring together all the people that are doing ceremonies for the earth earth healing ceremonies and that it was very important at this stage that humanity can heal and for this that the earth's energy can be vibration can be uplifted uh, so he asked us to try to bring together all the people that are doing this work uh, so that healing can be possible and that healing was uh, an important step that would make possible other stage of evolution for humanity so myself i i very much relate also to the vision of the sacred earth council um, i work in the field of sustainability especially with international such as un organizations and for my work i have traveled in a lot of places and i've always been uh, interested in gathering the spiritual wisdom for all from all traditions that um, that can be um, used uh, to uh, design the kind of um, politics that uh, that we need so right now i'm working on a book uh, called the politics of being spiritual wisdom for new development paradigm where I basically, you know, come back to what many spiritual leaders have expressed that our collective goal uh, as societies should be uh, our spiritual development, uh, being more 
rather than having more. And um, so I've tried to um, conceptualize uh, this vision, articulate it, and be and propose some kind of very concrete pathways, policies, and institutions that are uh, starting to develop here and there and bring them together in a coherent vision that can really speak to uh, decision makers, including uh, using both the language of science, social science in particular, and uh, spirituality. We are very glad to wish you a very beautiful day and may our blessings be with you. Thank you, Emelina and Tomas, for your beautiful sharing and uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Erna Fleury, and I'm here to bring more introduction for Sacred Earth Council. And Emelina had a dream when she was 10, and I guess that was in 88 or 89, 1988 or 89, and I had a dream in 1988 or 89 and so I want to share this dream because this is the inspiration for Sacred Earth Council. So in the dream I am out on the beautiful prairie. It's actually a desert. It's a southwest desert and I see in the distance a hogan down in the valley below where I Vista and it's a beautiful clear starry night and there's a smoke coming out of the smoke hole of the Hogan and there's light in the window and then suddenly I'm inside of the Hogan around this lovely fire and I'm joining maybe 18 20 people who are all sitting around this lovely fire and as I join them I realize that this is a very special gathering. It's people of great love, great wisdom, service, great knowledge. And we sit there all night in council, sharing uh, teachings, uh, nurturing one another. And I am, I'm so moved because I'm being brought into this gathering, uh, and I, it, I've never been in any place like that before. And I feel really honored to be able to receive of these teachings. It's, it's just um, very profound. And then, as I'm sitting there, I look and I see out the window, and I see the sky is starting to get a little bit light, and that uh, sunrise will be coming. And all of a sudden we all stand up, all of us together, and we start walking around this fire clockwise, and we're going like this. We're going, we're pulling spirit, we're pulling magic, we're pulling love, we're pulling wisdom, and we're pulling it, and like we're bringing it to this earth and seeding it a seeding process, all of us around the council fire. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing because it's like pulling light and magic and power and majesty and bringing it to this level. Then I look out the window and it's the sky is getting very light, but I see hundreds and hundreds of people. A man walks past the outside of the window, they're all going, we're all going to the sunrise. And so we go out and we walk into the sunrise with these people. And I woke up and I have drawn great inspiration and great power from this dream, but I have I did not have an understanding of this until two years ago and then I began to realize that this council is for now.
Sacred Earth Council. So Sacred Earth Council is coming into to being, coming alive now in these times. And those of us who are involved right now are gathering, actually, we're all gathering together around this hearth fire of great love. And we're starting this coalescence process, uh, learning from each other, supporting each other, and we're just now beginning this process of bringing in the sacred and actually this time, this sharing is part of it. As we discussed many, many times that our beloved visionary Makasapa, Black Elk, shared with us such a great, great vision and prophecy we see unfolding now. And it's the core the foundation of our Earth Council. And Black Elk said this at the end of his great, great vision. In essence, he said, as they approached the highest mountain of all, he said they came first to the first stage and they struggled so hard, they were beaten down, hurt, as we were as we went through this tremendous 500 years of preparation for this day, where we lost you know, up to 80, 90 million of our relatives were lost through viruses and diseases and so forth, as well as other colonization processes. But that was a preparation because we're stronger than ever. And what Black Elk saw is exactly what's happening today. Because he said, as he made his way up to the highest mountain of all, as he went higher and higher, the first stage, the second, third stage, the third stage. And finally, he said, I found myself standing on the highest mountain of all. And I looked down below and I saw the sacred hoop of my people. It was a hoop of many hoops. In the center stood a mighty flowering tree with its branches overshadowing the children of one father and one mother. And I saw more than I could understand. And I understood more than I could say. For I was seeing the shapes of all things as you live together in harmony and peace. And I turned to the east, and two men were coming flying like arrows. And between them rose the daybreak star with four blossoms, red, yellow, white, and black. And they came and gave an herb to me, the herb of understanding. And they said, with this herb of understanding, you shall have power over all things. And I took it and dropped it upon the earth. And where it fell, there was no more darkness. And so, beloved Mkashi, I thank you so much for your dedicated, heartfelt, determined, compassionate, loving determination in creating the Sacred Earth Council at this promised, destined time of transformation and change. This is the time to initiate a four-year cycle of ceremonies. And on Earth Day, this coming Wednesday, we are manifesting the global ceremony for peace on Earth, reuniting the condor, the quetzal, and the eagle. So the time has come for a human family to come together and share. And share in ceremony, and share from heart to heart, and share the great vision of the Sacred Earth Council. So Nkashi, this is the time, as we prayed about, to begin our four years of ceremony. Four years of ceremony and also our gift to humanity of talking, sharing, and healing circles. Because as your Dek Shi always used to say, my beloved Ate, he said, son, if you can feel it, you can heal it. If you can talk about it, you can understand it. This is a time that we truly need to be able to understand 
Mother Earth's not sick, we're sick. Our human family's sick. And until we look inside and purify our minds and hearts from all this materialism and greed, etc., which has been a learning process to this day, when we will realize, when we will realize that we truly are spiritual beings having a brief journey in this transitory life, learning the natural laws that govern all creation. And so, Hunkashi, we're going to keep on going. And then when we go to the other side camp, even then, we'll even go more. <laughs> Love you. Big hugs. <laughs>